Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going back to the 41st millennium and we're going to go via the medium of the Death Guard. Um, these guys, oh, ooh, they're gross. I can never quite get over how grim they really are. Uh, the Death Guard are devoted to the Chaos God Nurgle, who is all about death, disease, rot, corruption... And uh, he's pretty good at it. Grandfather Nurgle bestows generously his gifts on those that follow him. And as you can see with this fella in particular, he's uh, he's got a fair bit going for him. All of these ew, grotesque bits and pieces all over him. Now, the cool thing with these guys is that they're actually not particularly difficult to paint. Now, I've chosen to do mine probably a little bit darker than the sort of official Games Workshop version. But it is much, much simpler. And I think it looks pretty cool. I like that slightly mottled effect that the armor has. So we'll show you how to do that with some simple techniques, namely dry brushing. Now, if you happen to have gotten your hands on, you know, a starter set, for example, we're just into 2018 now, so there'll be a few of you joining along. So, hello, <laughs> welcome aboard. And what we'll do now is get a look at the paints we're going to use to get this guy painted. So with the magic of television, let's take a step back, right back to the beginning, and get a look at the paints we're going to use. First off, Death Guard Green, that'll be the base coat for all of our armor, and indeed the whole model. Now I've got here, this fella that I have actually base coated him, he's been given Storm Vermin Fur. I like the mid-tone sort of grey color. And this will be a really good one for putting Death Guard Green over the top of when I come to base coat him. If you were going to paint an army of these guys, then the Death Guard Green Spray would be the place to start, because it'll save you a whole bunch of time. I'm just not going to paint enough of them to make it worthwhile. <laughs> but you probably want that spray, but this is how I'm going to do it for, for this model here. Once the base coat of Death Guard Green is dry, we're going to go on to Athonian Camo Shade. Now this is a shade, and what that's going to do is settle into all the recesses and sort of the, the deeper parts of the model to give us that nice deep green shading. That'll be really cool. Once that's good and dry, over the top we're going to dry brush Nurgling Green. We'll talk a little bit about dry brushing when we get to that. All of the metal details will be either Balthazar Gold or Lead Belcher. There's a fair bit of sort of armor trim which looks really good with this Balthazar Gold. Any metallic parts that are weapons and what have you, Lead Belcher, nice and simple. We'll then do some tidying up with Abaddon Black, or Abaddon Black, however you say it. All of the sort of scungy, tentacle-style parts, we're going to do Screamer Pink as the base coat. Mephiston Red will be any sort of odds and sods, any little bits that we want to brighten up a bit. Um, eye lenses, for example. And then any bone details, we'll swap between sort of Rakarth Flesh or Xandri Dust, uh, depending on what we want the sort of overall effect to look like. And then once all those base coats are done, we're going to go back over with another shade, our good friend Agrax Earthshade. And you'll see why when that second wash goes over the top. So let's get started. Now I've gone ahead and put just a little bit of water into my brush, because these uh, this is a medium base brush, sorry, a large base brush. And these soak up a fair bit of water when you dip them. So you want to be kind of careful with this. So once my brush is wet, I'm just going to get some Death Guard Green out of the pot. Sort of mix it into the bristles there. So I've got a decent, uh, decent mix. And then just liberally apply to the model. Um, the cool thing with these base brushes is with the sort of uh, pointed wedge edge they've got going, you can really work into all of these crevices and what have you. Now you might notice, as I'm going on for the first time, it's not covering perfectly. And part of that's because Death Guard Green is actually quite a light color. So what I'm going to do is, once I've covered all of the stuff I want to be green the first time, I'll then go back over, once this one's dry, and give it a second thin coat, just to make sure that that base color is nice and even. So after about 15 to 20 minutes to dry, we're ready to go ahead and pop on our Athonian Camo Shade. Now because of the drying time involved, this is where you'll start to see that batch painting, so doing sort of three to five of these Death Guard Marines at a time, this will save you some time overall versus painting them all individually. But hey, I don't want to paint five. <laughs> these guys are so gross. But let's concentrate and get on to the Athonian Camo Shade. Now the cool thing with these is you don't need to worry about watering them down. 
So what I've got here, uh, this is an older Citadel wash brush, but if you've got the medium shade brushes, this will do exactly the same job. So just get yourself a bit of that on the end of your brush, you know, load it up, and start bucketing it into all of the recesses of the model. Um, you want to cover the whole thing too, but make sure that you are working at it anywhere that it's going to, you know, you see if I get in real close here, all of these nice recesses. Now this doesn't take too long, this is fairly simple, so just go around now and you want to bucket all over the green this camo shade. Now once that Ethonian camo shade is dried, you can see what a big difference it makes to the overall tone of the model. And particularly on the back on these old Nurgle Marines, you see how all of that lovely deep uh, shading has settled in and given it a real cool sort of three-dimensional effect. Nice and simple that. What we're going to do now is dry brush the high points. Now how dry brushing works is what we're trying to do is sort of lightly flick the bristles of our brush back and forth across the high points of any detail while at the same time leaving all that shading intact. So I've got here a little bit of Nurgling Green on the end of my dry brush, this is a medium dry brush, and I'm going to work it into the bristles by rubbing most of it off. <laughs> I know it sounds counterintuitive, but what we're going to do is sort of grind this on. This is a bit of old uh, kitchen towel or paper towel, whatever you call it. And then what I'm going to do, you see it's quite dry, just go ahead and I'll start with the backpack here so I get an idea of how this is going to look when it goes on. So you see what happens then, if I get a bit closer, is that we get that cool sort of triple barreled effect. Let's go ahead and try on the front of them here. Don't worry too much if you're going to catch areas that you aren't going to want green because we're going to paint over those anyway. So all I'm going to do now is just slightly back and forth across all of these armoured areas to give us that highlight to this uh, Death Guard Marine. Now this can look quite mottled and messy, but personally I quite like how that's going to turn out. So I'm going to finish that off, we'll come back and get on to the next steps. Now with the armour done, it's time to start layering on these other details. So I've got here my Balthazar Gold. And after a couple of brushfuls on my palette, I'm just adding water until it runs smoothly when I run my brush through it. Then give it a little bit of a twirl just to see that it comes back to a point there, if we see that. And then anywhere that you want to be that sort of brassy, dingy, beaten up color, start applying this now. In some places you might find that you need two thin coats, but that's not a big problem. Just take your time and I like to be quite generous with this on the Death Guard. I think they look pretty cool when they're sort of, you know, for lack of a better term, blinged out, let's say. So going around now, and I'm just going to fill in all of these areas I want to be Balthazar Gold. Now just while I'm painting these shoulder pad trims, here's an opportunity to show you something cool I like to do. If you're having any trouble painting these sort of straight edged areas, thing to do, get your model in your hand such that you can hold it straight. Now I know this is a little bit difficult because I've got the camera in the way here, but trust me. If you get your hands there like this, organize your brush so that all you're going to do, instead of sort of painting along it like this, you know, moving your hand, all you want to do is just move the brush down in a straight line because that's much easier to control. Then when you want to swap direction, just move the model in your hands and carry on doing the same thing again. All right, these short strokes downward are much easier to control. So like I said, I've been quite generous with that Balthazar Gold because I think they look good with a fair bit of it on there. So after that, we're going to move on to the lead belcher and do all the metal details. Now for this, instead of the uh, medium layer brush, I'm going to use a small base brush, one of these slightly more chunky looking ones because they have slightly st uh, stiffer bristles. Now that's going to be handy when we come to painting these, uh, these sort of chainmail areas. And luckily it still keeps quite a good point, so not too much to worry about there. So now switching back to a medium layer brush, we're going to get some Abaddon black and start tidying up anywhere that we want to be black. Okay, so most of this big blight launcher thing 
Um, for example, if you were painting bolt guns, you know, this would be when you're doing in the casings and that for them. Uh, and as well, any sort of exposed gaps in the joints here, this is a good time to get in with your Abaddon Black and darken those down. Oops. Oh, well, no one's going to see that. <laughs> so now take your time and black in areas that you want to be black. Now I have quickly gone in with a little bit of lead belcher and Balthazar gold just to tidy up a couple of edges. Uh, once the black is dried, you can go in and just give it a little bit more detail on the surface there. You don't need to do much with that. I've got here my Screamer Pink, and this is going to be all of the uh, tentacles and sort of exposed uh, wire cabling and stuff like that. So, for example, on the back of this guy's gun here, he's got this uh, cable running into the back there. You know, all of these writhing tentacly bits. Ugh. Ugh. Crab claw. Ugh. So... <laughs> Now is this the case? I'm just I'm just bopping on a little bit of color here so you can see them, but take your time and search out all of these areas. There's quite a few of them on most of these Nurgle boys, so take your time and fill them in with Screamer Pink. Blah. Now it will look as though there's quite a lot of purple on there now, but don't worry too much about that because we are going to paint over a lot of those sort of tentacle bits. We're just using the same base color because it'll save us a bit of time and it saves you having to buy another three or four different bleeding paints. So once you've got that out of the way, it's time to get just a little bit of my fist on red on a small layer brush. And if there's any part which is tricky, it's probably this bit because now we're going to just dab in these eyes. So take your time with this. And careful, careful. Now I've got my Rackarth Flesh, and I'm going to do any of these little sort of exposed Bubo things. Anything that's bursting through the armor, let's give it a quick coat of Rackarth Flesh. We'll do a little bit more with it later. And then our last base coat, Zandri Dust, is going to go anywhere that there's sort of bony material protruding through the armor. Uh, you can also use this if you've got a model that has like really pronounced claws. This is a good color to base coat that sort of thing. Now that all of those base coats are applied, we can start to see sort of the basic shape that this Death Guard Marine is going to take. I've spent a little bit of time making sure that I haven't missed any of these bony protrusions. Uh, same two around the back, just any of these little details that I want to make sure they're going to look cool, I have painted in and ready to rock and roll. Now it's fairly messy, funnily enough. <laughs> But the colors themselves are all nice and strong. You want to make sure that your base coats are really solid for this because the next step is where that's going to all come together. So I've got our good friend Agrax Earthshade here and I've gone back to my wash brush or shade brush. And now it's a case. We're going to go over the entire model, even all of the armor that we've already painted. So just start chucking this on in the way that you normally would. Go around your whole model and make sure you're not missing any of these areas of detail. Same as before, you want to make sure that it gets into the recesses. But take your time now, and then you want to give it plenty of time to dry. Now while he's drying, I'm going to quickly take you through just a handful of colors I'm going to use to highlight. We're not going to touch up the green anymore because it's going to look dirty and dingy and quite cool how it is. But we're going to need to touch up those tentacle bits, those horrid, ugh, gross parts. <laughs> so we're going to use Bugman's Glow first of all. We're actually going to go back to a base coat. Then we're going to do a final edge highlight with Cadian Flesh Tone. All of the brassy bits we'll touch up with a little bit of Liberator Gold. And then all of the metallics, so the lead belcher that we used, we'll edge with Stormhost Silver. The bone we're going to do with Shabti Bone. And then as sort of a last step, this is optional this one, I'm going to go over some of those gross bits like the the pustules and what have you, and some of the areas of these tentacles, I'm going to touch with a little bit of Cassandora yellow. Now these are quite big pots to buy, you know, just for one thing, so if you want to skip this over, that's fine, but I am going to go ahead and do this because I think it looks pretty cool, and this has lasted me a good long while. Now after about half an hour of time to dry, you can see what we've got left with, and he's starting to look really scungy and horrible, which is perfect. 
this is exactly what I was hoping for. And you can see how much sort of more mottled and frankly gross he looks. <laughs> so I'm quite pleased with that. What we'll get to now is we'll start on highlighting all of those fleshy, rubbery, gross bits, like his, like his flobbery sort of claw here. So I've got a little bit of Bugman's Glow, and what I'm going to do is get into most of the skin stuff. But anywhere, like right up against the edges, I'm going to leave that, uh, that purple behind. So this is probably the most time-consuming part of of the highlighting, if I'm honest, because you want to be fairly selective and you want to make sure that you're leaving a little bit of that purple behind so you've got that sickly sort of coloration to everything. So what I'll do now is go around and all of these bits I want to highlight, I'm going to do those now with my Bugman's Glow. And there we have that Bugman's Glow all over those grubby little protuberances. And you can see I've really only left that purple right in the deepest recesses. For the most part, I have covered everything in Bugman's Glow. So now, in order to give just a little bit more definition to that, we're going to go to Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're going to highlight some of those extreme little knobbly bits. So let me get in close here. So up nice and close, let's just go ahead and jam in around these little suckery bits. Ugh on the tops of these little lumpy bits, at the tips of the flobberies, and anywhere that you would just want to accentuate a little bit of that, uh, that shape, that outline. So go around, you can do as much or as little of this as you like. I'm just going to go around and use it as a chance to build a little bit more shape into these things. Although I might regret that. Ugh. So we can see now, and particularly around the back of this, specific one, just using those highlights to add a little bit of texture and some of the sort of rubbery grossness to those gripping tentacles. Blah. So next up we've got Liberator Gold. We're going to quickly bat on a few little highlights to some of this brassy stuff. Now this is pretty simple and there's a bit of a trick here. Rather than trying to paint a straight line with a very tip of your brush, instead, once you've got your brush loaded up, use the edge of it so if I go here, you see I've gone past the tip of my brush, and I'm just going to use the edge to do a real sharp high line along the edges of this detail. Now a few parts, like for example the rivets and what have you, just give them a quick poke with the tip of your brush, but for the most part you'll get away with using the edge. So go around now, any of this uh, brassy detail, touch that with Liberator Gold. Then doing the same again with Stormhost Silver over any silver details. Now this you want to be a little bit more sparing with, I think, because you want this to keep it sort of grungy, dirty look. But any really extreme edges, a little bit of uh, Stormhost Silver will help accentuate that. Now with the Shabti Bone, we're going to do the edges of these boned areas Instead of painting in the whole area, we just want to do some sort of jaggedy lines to get that more natural sort of horn look to them. Now there was a colour here I forgot to mention. Uh, we're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh and just go in and sort of circle in any of these ugh, exposed pimply bits. There was another quick optional piece. I've got some pink horror here and a small layer brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and any of these sort of broken edges on the uh, pipe work, just a little bit of pink horror around the edges to accentuate those. Now we're going to go ahead with that optional step of Cassandora Yellow. Now this is going to leave behind kind of a muted, but slightly more infected look. So instead of putting this over everything, I'm just going to splodge this on a few areas of these sort of tentacle pieces that I want to look, I guess, a little bit more ugh, diseased and rampant and what have you. So you can paint this in um, either in the recesses or you can paint it around sort of any of the raised areas, there's little bumps and what have you to make them look inflamed. But you can use as little or as much of this as you like. 
you don't need to be too precise because you know I am just painting it wherever I fancy. There's no right way to do this part. And then once I've done that over all of those skin areas, I want to look sort of more fetid and gross. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the pustules as well. Ah. And there we have it, guys. One finished Death Guard. And, oh, yuck. <laughs> One of the joys of seeing these guys on the table is your opponent's reaction. Uh, this is not too difficult to do, as you guys have seen, and really, that iconic green power armor for the Death Guard is the easiest part, okay? It's all just dry brushing, a wash, and then a simple highlight. You can sort of skip out some of these steps or add to them as you'd like in order to, you know, change up your own recipe. There's no right way to do this, but I think this is pretty simple, and it looks really striking on the tabletop. So again, guys, thanks very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed something or, you know, found something useful in all of this. If you'd like, you can get in touch either here on YouTube. There's my Facebook and Twitter pages linked down below too. So as ever, thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.